Last we left off, our party had arrived in Dark Vale under grey and ashy skies, but with a cheerful outlook nonetheless. Wisely assessing that Cal could use a rest before setting off again, Augustus spoke with the Dragonborn, acquired some coin, and found lodging in one of the two taverns of the upper level. While Cal went to sleep off the uh, exhaustion he'd accumulated, you all began to explore the town and seek out Captain Daedric Verglass and the Rhyme Thrasher, the vessel and Captain Cal had hinged his whole plan here on. In the relatively small harbor, it was not particularly challenging to find the hammerhead shark-adorned ship, and you met with the outlandish but affable Furbolg, and were welcomed to dinner that evening where Cal would be able to make his pitch to bring Ursa and himself aboard. With business out of the way, you began to poke around the rest of the harbor. You found yourselves aboard the Kingsmith and in the company of the Duke, a relic hunter whose relics were a uh, touch underwhelming and whose attitude did not inspire you, save Andromeda, whose fascination superseded the Duke's flat presentation. Despite the less than impressive stock, the Kingsmith does house a handful of magical items and curios, which is a rarity in the kingdom. In fact, it is illegal to peddle magical wares without proper licensing, uh, but it would seem that enforcement of many of the King's laws um, are far more lax in the fringe of Candor. Beyond the Kingsmith, you made your way back to Upper Vale, purchased some gear and warm clothes before returning to Mallory's to check in with your friends and to rest. During your rest, uh, awaiting the uproarious dinner to come, Ursa once again, to be, uh, once again began to broach the subject of teaching her to control her powers. Under Andy's tutelage, you watched the young girl begin to summon the sparks of green light, and over a few hours, harness a pure ball of glowing crystal or gem. Ultimately, with either excitement or inexperience, you watched as her next cast began to grow and burn, a mini sun bound within her palm. Its intensity forced you to shield your eyes, and you felt the tinge of heat and flame before Ursa was able to control and quell her spell. Nonetheless, she was satisfied, and you've begun the path of helping her to harness whatever her power is, to use some of it in small bursts to avoid building up and ultimately erupting. Finally, rested and rejuvenated, Cal joined you, and you all went to the Rhyme Thrasher for a meal and drinks. Music was played, stories were shared, and for the first time in a week, things seemed to be looking up. As the majority of you departed for the festivities uh, near midnight, began to wait for the cargo lift back up to the upper vale, sheltering against the bitter cold of the Nord Sea. Enid caught the scent of something foul on the, on the wind, so foul and evocative that it triggered a sense memory, something you'd buried deep within your subconscious long ago, something made you feel this prickling sensation of dread. As you snap to this scent of particular rot lingers for a moment before it's whipped away on the wind but the fear remains rooted in your churning stomach what do you do uh i just kind of stopped my tracks uh i'm hoping that uh my brother can sense my hesitation i'm just kind of like i can't tell if it's the ale or not but i don't feel so good Oh, what's wrong? I don't know what just happened. I just got like a sense of something. Something Something I've forgotten? I don't know. All I know is I don't feel so good. Can I just take this moment, DM, to try and look around or perceive something? Is there anything spooky watching us, I guess is what I'm looking for? Sure, make a perception check. I think I'll just kind of saddle up next to you and just take a look around. Uh, A reminder as well, just before you call out the the role, um, Enid and Augustus, you guys, and um, Andromeda and Ursa are all gathered together awaiting the the cargo uh, lift platform here, still on the the lower level, waiting for it to kind of come down. and uh, Decrane, you have elected to remain back, uh, where you know drinks and, and stories are still being told in the in the in the belly of the beast of the Rhyme Thrasher, um, alongside you know most of the crew is still partying and still uh, having an evening. It's only midnight, um, but uh, these guys had elected to to leave. You're not particularly far from one another, um, just for in terms of like knowing where the others are in in the world. Um, but as uh, Augustus, yeah, you you scan 
the very dark there's there's very little light here on the docks there are a handful of small fires that are like almost like uh like barrel fires to act as like points of light at the corners of the docks but there's a significant amount of shadow and um uh, and just dark crevices and corners within which things could uh, be obscured or hidden. But what did you roll with your perception? 19. Okay. Um, kind of stepping back and looking all around, um, you don't see anything immediately that kind of catches your eye. There's a little bit of movement on the docks. Um, you see a couple, a pair of figures like, kind of stumbly walking which but they look humanoid they look fine they're you know appear to be normal you know there there are other ships here um and uh drinking sailors are, are not exactly anything out of the norm um but with a 19 um there's just this a little like just something that just catches your eye um almost like you can't ex explain it. There's just something you just see out of the corner of your eye kind of tucking behind a ship or like almost like bes uh, down along the side of the dock. Just for a split second, you feel like you could have seen something, but you don't see anything. It's all, like a shadow just. Don't think I'll say anything about it just yet. Just kind of, was that a trick of the eye? Or was that something? but I'll turn to Nettie and say, what did you, you said you remembered something. That's the thing. I felt like I remembered something, but I don't know exactly what it was I remembered. I just feel a sense of dread. Hmm. I'll turn to um, Andy and just kind of like offhandedly mention something like, we don't, uh, we don't remember much of our childhood, um, so this is important. Yeah, okay. I think for maybe the first time in this town, I'll like open up my little coat and take um, Ray out just for a little extra comfort. And as I kind of have her out and she starts to move around, I'm gonna cast Pass Without a Trace around us. She's just gonna kind of like circle around us and. Oh, that's Her a good light's idea. It's going to kind of cast past without a trace on us. Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting um, thing where um, immediately around you, Ray is is a, like a ball of, of light. Like immediately mm -hmm. around you becomes uh, illuminated and and ever so slightly warmer. Like it's like a, a living torchlight mm -hmm. almost immediately around the four of you. Um, and Ursa just watches, and you see the glitter of the reflection in her eyes um, as as Ray begins to encircle. Um, but what's what's interesting from like the exterior of the kind of circle of the four of you, um, though interior is lit on the outside, it is doing like an opposite refraction of light where it is almost pitching the light down, um, but keeping on the interior to yourselves lit um, in this magical um, obfuscation. Uh, Enid, go ahead and throw me a survival check for me. <laughs> That's a nine. <laughs> Yeah, the the distraction has fully you've come back fully to the now. There's no more pulling back to this like sense memory and it already it's it's slipping. Like it, it there it's like a dream trying to remember the bits and pieces. Um the the last vestiges are kind of slipping away from your memory, but the pit in your stomach remains like you know it, there was something real to it. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, the, the scent has just kind of escaped you. That's so weird. I I swear I felt it for a moment. I swear it was there. I was so close. But well, it's gone. Maybe it'll come back and you'll have some more clarity through it. Uh, don't tell me I have to have more of that gross ale, though, to get that feeling no, back. That, that was straight poison. Oh, I'm not doing that again. No, thank no. you, that. Um, Andy, maybe we should, uh, get Ursa back to her room. No offense, Ursa, but it, it is quite late. Actually, she's, like, pretty much passed out, as I recall, right? She's, like, she's, like, sleepy. she's, like, only just awoken because you put, like, a light here. Like, but she was, like, falling asleep in Andy's arms. So maybe I'll be, like, Andy, maybe we should get her back to Cal, but then 
kind of worried that, worried about leaving the crane. Well, it tells in the, in, the, in the ship with the crane. That's why we have her. Shit. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Should we go back down as soon as we go up? I'll, or be, just... I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Mm-mm. There's nothing we're worried about. No, it's okay. There's, I'm, there's I'm awake. I'm up now. It's cold. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, Enid, what is it that you, you said you, what triggered this? That's the thing. I have no idea. We were just walking and out of blue. I just got a scent of just, just this dread. A, a, like, scen- a, really a sense dread. or a scent? Like a smell? Yeah, but a sense as well. Okay. Um, has like the wind shifted or anything lately, Kyle, or something might not be... Or like, which way is the wind coming in? Like, where a smell could have been coming in from? Uh, the difficulty here is that like you're in a cove, so mm, the wind okay, is like everywhere. it's coming in and then swirling. Okay. Um, so it's less of like, you know, it's carried from over here directly across us. It is being carried like basically right off of the open sea into the cove, but then it's becoming a swirling mass. Um, so it could be coming in or it could be being brought from within the cove somewhere. Can you t- talk to your god to make your god talk to, to Crane to tell him to come? Uh, yeah, it's not really in my wheelhouse. Um, I wish there's a couple, there's a couple ways you can kind of communicate with people, but I don't have that yet. Maybe eventually. Um, oh, how far are we? From the ship, sorry, you've kind of mentioned it, but like we're up the elevator now. Nope. You guys are still waiting oh. for the elevator. It is about to arrive in the time you've been I chatting. thought we were up on it. So okay, was, I thought we great. were like going up on it and Allie like almost fell down, but she almost fell into the water. This is my she false, false memory. Beside. Gotcha. Yeah, you guys are still like waiting for it to come down. Why don't we turn around and get to crane? At this point, yeah. it does Damn come it. down. <laughs> two, people, two people get off and make their way you know, to one of the boats, but... I don't um, think it moves back up until you put money in it. So we have, uh-huh. like, a couple minutes if someone wants to run. Uh-huh. Not alone. We're not going to double split the party. Let's okay. go back to just and get to Crane together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, let's just do it quick. You guys, it, you know, two minutes, three minutes back down the, the docks to the... To the uh, uh, Rhyme Thrasher once more, boarding and descending da- down into the hall, into the midst of this haze of smoke and like, you know, uh, music just booming out as like the full crew is in like full swing playing music. Um, and you see um, uh, Cal also is now kind of playing uh, a drum alongside some of the other uh, musicians uh, as. Um, uh, for glass is doing a very like drunken stumbling dance in the middle of mm. it all it's a little it's a little crazy sexy oh. not particularly it depends on your flair i was picturing it being kind of like a rave kind of like a you know like a light show a little less, like a, less a that poorly done irish jig drunken <laughs> pirates in the belly of a ship Where, what's the crane doing yeah, what is the crane doing? I'm sitting in a corner. Mm-hmm. I'm just observing everyone, mm-hmm. not saying anything, oh. not moving, not dancing, just Bare, not even breathing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Just I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> yeah. I, I stone am curious. <laughs> are you actually like enjoying yourself, or are you in a stoic like uh, ob- uh, observation? I'm using it like sort of like to observe and learn about everyone, seeing if there's anything that I need to know or like, is there anyone I need to watch out for? Okay, perfect. Cool. I like cool. that. Um, Are you like actively up. trying to find something or someone or just watching? Uh, I'm looking for weak points and I'm looking for threats. Okay. Uh, if you'd like, you can make like an insight or perception check of uh, your choice. Um... Uh, let me check what I'm better at. Maybe that 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 will decide. Look at this uh, huge IKEA craft while you're looking at that that I got. Oh, wow. it's massive. IKEA did not sponsor this video, but if you want to IKEA, give me sick. Sorry, Kev. 
Yeah, if you want to Ikea, there's some really cool semi-goth furniture I want for my house. It will go right here, behind me, and people okay, will perception. see it today. <laughs> perception. perception. 13 plus 5, plus 18. 18? Nice. Uh, over the last, you know, we'll call this like a protracted over the evening thing you've been doing um, an hour, to, actually a couple hours. Um, the sense you're getting from the crew, none of them are are a threat. Um, they can be threatening, like they are. You, you notice, like there are there are blades, there are there are weapons, kind of uh, stashed here and there. Some of them keep them uh, sheathed. Um, they're ready in, in case of emergency. Um, you can see that many of them are scarred in, in various ways, um, but the attitude uh, uh, at which they have with Cal and with Ursa and with yourselves, um, once you've been like welcomed in, especially by Verglass specifically, but once you've been welcomed within, you are a part of this. You're not an antagonist. Um, and it becomes this very much like welcoming, like family vibe led solely by the patriarch of, of Verglass. Like he is the ringleader here fully as captains often are. Um, and he is, um, he's an interesting character in that he's, his stories have ranged from like wildly near impossible to um, like heartbreakingly like solemn and sad and and so truthful um, but never threatening to those he brings in as uh, as yourselves no no, no first no, two, like two things one none, no one else is with me right like I'm alone right now like they're not these guys are about to come down but for a while you've been okay. alone. you've had some time and um Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pay until I guess until I'm pulled out. I'm gonna pay a bit of an extra attention on Verglass because I feel like you know. Yeah, he can be very welcoming, but then cartel leaders mm -hmm. can be welcoming to people that they like. Sure. This guy's like sobbing, talking about his like <laughs> high school sweetheart, and you're like, I don't know about it. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. <laughs> Uh, another day but uh, as you've been watching and, and uh, suspiciously or otherwise the uh, the party you guys do all return you've only been gone for like five ten minutes since like you decided okay we're gonna call it a night and then immediately return ah we're back <laughs> you just like run in and find a crane and be like hey to crane uh this is some weird shit if you want to come see some weird shit uh Enid had this like she smelt something weird and something might be going on but it could be nothing but it could be something i think it's best that i leave and come with you then okay okay should we get um uh how how in his cups does uh cal look oh cal's gone okay oh, nah, yeah. he's, he's done He's had a he's had a night. He's just like vibing to the music and play playing this drum. Call me, call he's me. He's been taken to another plane. It's best we leave him until he returns. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, everybody's upstairs. Uh, speedily, you guys all return uh, once again, uh, and uh, again, it's just an awful, awful return from like. Uh, the surprising warmth of the belly of the rhyme thrasher back to the the you know arctic adjacent exterior especially this late at night um but altogether you are regrouped on either on on deck of the rhyme thrasher or on the uh, on the docks maybe if while andy was going down there and knowing i'm a i'm a small little bunny rabbit could i take a moment to either look from some of the rigging or to look from the railing at that spot if i have another vantage spot where i thought i saw something new yeah make a you can make a renewed perception check um if you like exact same role i think okay 19, 19 yeah or 18 yeah 19 you stand for the for the minute or two that it takes andy to, to rush downstairs and come back up with the crane um on the the bow of the ship just like looking and eyeing um you do have a, a slightly different perspective a slightly elevated one um but you don't see any any further signs at this point like it was either too fleeting or or you know it, maybe it wasn't anything there in the first place okay i'll like turn around and just 
smile at Nettie, like, I thought I saw something. Uh, Ursa just kind of has been, like, staying close to you guys, both for comfort and uh, warmth. Um, but as uh, Decrane and, and Andy return, um, she kind of looks at you guys and says, all right, well, if we're going to do something, let's do something. Otherwise, I'm tired. Well, we're just going to go back to bed, I think. We just want to be all together. Oh, I thought we were going to do something. You had some there energy. There could still be things. Them. There could things. Things could still happen. This walk, right? It's just better to be prepared. You don't want to. You got to be careful when you're places you don't know where you are, especially if there's small signs. Anyone being off on their own is never going to help. You all can't be scared. You, you, you fought that troll thing, and you ran from the the Arcanoclast and grill with nary a word. Aren't you all, like, brave heroes? Well, there are far more terrifying things than some trolls. Are... Well, I mean, people are pretty damn terrifying, but it's just better to be safe, yeah? All right. Especially in the middle of the night when people have had drinks, and we just want to keep you okay. All right. Plus, the crane's really good with weird, weird stuff, so if anything weird happens, he's probably good to have around. My sister's the, the bravest person I know, but you know, sometimes oh, it's, you... so it's true. It's true. Sometimes you feel more brave. You just have more brave people around you. And the crane doesn't really radiate warmth or bravery, but I saw him shoot something out of that weird contraption he has on his side. So I thought if anything scary tried to get at my sister, he could. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, I, I suppose it makes sense. It's the same. You know, I have Cal. You have each other. But here, so you, n- you never know what's going to happen, so you keep an eye out, right? Okay, right, let's make our way back to that weird lifty thing. You guys return to the lift. Uh, someone throws some copper down, uh, and you can find your way back up to Upper Vale with, uh, without issue. The fuck is it that? is a, a long, slow rise back up the cargo lift, and... Uh, in the kind of unsettled nature of your uh, of your crew as you're looking out and about. Everyone make perception checks for me. Oh, man. What are you doing to us? Oh, uh, that's better. 16. 24. Yes. Ooh. Hi. Ooh. Well, that, that balances my natural one. Good job. Okay. <gasps> oh, no. That does balance it and cancel it, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm. But Al, you rolled real, real well. There was a 24, a nat 20, a nat 1, and a... I think I said... 8. 16? Or 16. 16. 16. <clears throat> uh, and Ursa's 11 is not anything to, to write home about. About halfway up the rise, which is only... It only takes about a minute or, or two to, to reach the top on this, uh, on this convo. And did you catch the scent again quicker um and on the wind like coming from the other way in the same way i was describing the wind kind of like whips around um like as if the wind was riding up the side of like where the waterfall is is crashing down into the into the waves it like flies up and you just kind of get caught up in the scent and it's just like like passing over you know, a rotting like garbage can. And just for that brief sen- second, you get that like whiff that just kind of collides into your senses. Um, but it's a, um, it's a particularly vegetative rot um, scent. So it's got that particular pungent uh, smell of, of rotting uh, vegetation. Um, and then it, it's, it's gone instantly but you catch it once more. Oh, Augie, there it is again. You smelled oh. it again? Do I smell this at all? Well, I did. Uh, with that roll, you don't. Okay, okay. That's all I wanted to know. That's so... Did you get the, the, the memory thing again? Do you feel this scary bad again? No, I, I, it's just... It was just a scent of, like, rotting, gross... Uh, you know, like our compost back home. And we had, like, our veggie garden. We just threw all the scraps in. You you threw me in the 
compost like several times. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's uh, I will, like a low tide thing. I'm just also gonna add that like pit of fear like began to like kind of go away in it. Um, as soon as that like that that scent spikes back up, the, the fear spikes back up as well. It's not the fear condition, but it is like this, uh, like a primal like fright. Yeah, it, it was bad. I'll, sh- I'll shuffle closer to be more like shoulder to shoulder as we're we're riding up this. Sure. Uh, I don't know what that was. Let's be um, good. let's be on alert here as we work our way back. As you all, you know, finish the ride up and <clears throat> the the cargo lift returns back to Upper Vale, uh, and you can get out and make your way up to Mallory's. Um, Kev has made a, s- a specific request that no one can know about. <laughs> um, so I have okay. to do this tactfully. Um, on, will you want to try this while you're like on the lift, while you're on the docks, or when just like during the the process of of travel? Well, when I when I first hear that someone dete- like smells something, okay, yeah, okay, so we'll do it on the lift then. What I want from you is just a straight d twenty plus your wisdom modifier. Okay. I love this. Whatever's okay, happening, I love it. Seven. And my mm-hmm. wisdom modifier Two or three. is three ten. Um. Okay. Not bad. Um. I, I'm trying to say this as tactfully without like saying anything at the same time. Uh, it's very difficult. Just or use like, the chat. But, okay. Or like, no, 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 no. I, I would no, say like, no. do I, no. I, 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 like a spidey sense kind of thing. Do I sense something? That's exactly what I'm trying. I'm trying to find the right language to use without uh, telling everyone the, uh, you know, the fun parts. So in the in the way that you sense these these things, these um, this level of energy. The space in which that you can it, it, you can sense that um, it doesn't immediately ping anything to you in the time of of your travel, um, but what I would say is like almost like a retrospective, like introspective element of like having um, categorized what you've sensed thus far today. Um, there's been a couple of little, like percentage-wise, like two or three percent differences that you've like noticed. That like is nothing that you, you know. It's just like in in the air, in the atmosphere. You're, like you'll always kind of have a little bit of a little bit of energy frequencies that are different. A little bit of um, elements in the in the in the atmosphere in in people around you that are a little bit different. Um, but now with this like added weirdness um there's been like a a a strange energy sense um to this space but with a 10 you can't identify anything more if you got closer to something you could try and like pair like and identify um but that would be actively like you'd have to to hit the roll and then find a thing and like make a comparison but for the time being you don't get anything that that pings so I'll yeah I'll just just be aware I'll be aware yes uh, back up in Upper Vale you guys make your way up into the um, up into the kind of upper boardwalk and then back to Mallory's without issue okay I think we were all gonna be in one room and I was thinking Cal and Ursa were in the other is that how we set it up yeah presumably Do we you're free to mix and match if you want to but do we want Ursa to sleep alone? I mean, what we could do is we could stay like in their room and just like quietly hang out until he comes back, but I guess we don't know if he's probably going to stay there. There's no way he comes back. We can all just maybe crash in one room. It's been a weird night. It was a spooky smell. Yeah, sure. It's not not our coin. Yeah. I'll bring the sheets in from the other room and we can just have a little camp out. I can stay on watch. Oh, that's great. Don't you need sleep? Aren't you going to get tired? I find ways to rest that are not conventional. That's not important. Oh, not important. 
not to worry. I'm not one to pry. <clears throat> He's so weird, Nettie. Uh, I will go get our sheets and come back. <clears throat> Easy enough. Um, is there anything you guys want to do uh, in final preparations before you go to sleep? I don't think I Ursa, as you've returned back to the room, um, she's already like curled up in bed. Like now that she's like lost, like you guys have said, like you're not going to go and do anything fun. She's, <laughs> she's going to go to sleep. Like, but before you come back with blanket, she's already like half asleep in the bed. Um, Nettie. Yeah. Do you, do you remember that moment? before we met these guys. And I won't be saying this, this, um, like I'll be saying this pretty openly because it's a spooky time. Do you remember Marion the Red? That weird poem, song thing we heard before we came here? Did what you felt today kind of feel like that strange feeling? And this is probably a question for the DM, but just thinking of something we've encountered in the past. I mean, Maybe now that I think about it, maybe just a little bit. But I, the problem is, if, it, if this makes any sense, it left as quickly as it came. Mm -hmm. But it was there for a sec. Yeah, I would say that you felt... Um, with the with this poem or this song, this nursery rhyme that uh, the two of you heard back um, in Marabella, um, that kind of triggered your wanderlust and your need to explore and, and kind of find your roots. There was this this innate fey something, this this like bond that you both innately felt, and that tugged and was almost like forcibly tugged out of you by the exposure to this rhyme. Um, something he couldn't shake. This has that same feeling of something being pulled from you and, and pulled to the surface. Um, however, where that had a level of intrigue and that had a level of, a little level of whimsy as, as a lot of Fae stuff does, this had a pure fear and um you know what throw me an insight check Enid six uh yeah the, it's just too hard to nail down it has enough comparison to how the feeling overall like made you feel like how this experience made you feel to to like make that comparison but yeah, you, yeah unfortunately you can't get a more succinct answer but there's there's enough of a connection to say like yeah there's something else there yeah hmm. okay andy hmm. did you say you grew up in the jungle um not necessarily wait actually kyle this is where i never remember is that where um the one shepherd place is yeah sun shield or is it past the, shun the jungle okay no it's it, it's very it's very barely in the lazarus mm. yeah um, but it is in the lazarus jungle it is a, a pretty big uh shepherd stronghold there and that's where um that's where i had in, uh, went in and out and most of the time yeah Cool. But I've been kind of a little everywhere. Um, it's the whole thing of the shepherds. That's um, so sorry. Did you say? Did you say there was? Um, there's a poem. That's that, that's important. I've, I've just heard a lot of stories and a lot of poems. I'm not sure if I've heard it. Ever heard? Do you of know any like, parts? I was like Marion the Red. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can recall this fucking poem. <laughs> I would say you guys know it off by heart, given the the, the your characters know it off by heart. Uh, it is called Crimson Strings. It's called Crimson Strings. Have you ever heard that, like kids nursery rhyme before? Would I have heard of it? Make a history check. As I frantically look at my conversation with Kyle. I know I'm trying to find it too. <laughs> oh, I found it. Sick. 
History is very good. That's a 24. Great. Um, I mean, yeah, absolutely. You would have heard this at some point in the many, many, many evenings of storytelling in nursery rhymes. Anytime Thousands of stories. Kids involved, like, it's a, it's, it's a classic kind of nursery rhyme called Crimson Strings. Um, you've heard it. It's, it's a, it's a, um, it's always had a kind of like dark undertone as many nursery rhymes do. Um, you've never necessarily known it to have like, like a connection beyond just being like kind of a story. Like you, you've never, you know, dove into the backstory of what you've heard um, of this kind of like Mar the story about this marionette named Mary um, with crimson hair. Um, that was called the Crimson Strings. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a creepy one, but it's it's um, relatively common. Bet at a bunch of places. Yeah, it goes like maybe I can do a verse, and then Nettie, I know you can do a verse, and then I can do another one. It goes yeah. like super creepy Ma twins. Let's do it. Yeah, it's totally fine when twins do things, kind of in unison. Yep. Mary, Mary, Marionette, once she comes, do not fret. Red hair and dress a lover's caress. Thy hopes, thy dreams, this shall fetch. Mary, Mary, Marionette, your gift, a string, a brand new pet. Try to run or tell anyone, and you'll swing from the parapet. Mary, Mary, Marionette, her words, your tongue, a grim duet. Tug of her string, swift crimson springs, the words and wiles of Marionette. We kind of heard that, and it's like, you ever been to the tavern when a bard's playing something, and then for days after, you just can't get out of your head? That tune just sticks in there, find yourself humming it. It's like that, but like ice in the back of our heads. Just keep hearing it and feeling it and knowing it's important. We don't know why. And we don't remember where we first heard it, how we first heard it. It's just always, always been there. Would um, sorry, I don't, I don't. If this is probably too much, please interrupt me. But you said that um, you don't remember much from when you were kids. Is that? But would it, could that be it? You had it when you yeah. were kids. Maybe. Probably, but not too sure. And if that's the case, why is that the only thing we remember? Until tonight, when maybe Nettie remembered something new. And why did the smell trigger it, of all things, you know? The smell is pretty strong for sense memories. I don't know, is it is it good or bad that things are coming back? Do you want do you want to know? Actually, is that that's maybe the question. Do you want to know? what it is that you don't remember. I mean, I do. But we have a new life now. Augustus will just kind of look down and not really answer. I mean, DeCrane, you must have this a totally normal childhood. You learned to not sleep at some point. What? She grew up in the jungle. We don't remember our childhood. What was, you know, how was your younger years? I was a, I grew up in a very privileged society. And a it's, uh, it's safe to say that I was shielded from the real world when there was a lot going on. And I would later learn that when you're in power, um, you tend to turn a blind eye to a lot of things. So I learned very quickly that life was uh, going to get difficult. Better to see those things though, right? Exactly. I could have turned a blind eye. I may not be here right now. I might be king of king of the castle, let's just say. But uh, I chose a different path and uh, it's not been easy, but wouldn't have traded it for anything else. 
I'm glad you, um, glad you kept your eyes open. I'm also glad that I had those experiences as a kid, because without, without the good, we wouldn't know what's bad. And vice versa. Did I say, did I say that right? I, I think you meant, I think you meant the bad first. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, I, kind I totally of what's both ways. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's both ways. It's like how she's one side, I'm the other side. She's got dark for I got light for it. It's, a, it's all the same coin. Well, this is particularly creepy. I don't think any of us are going to have weird dreams at all tonight. Um, no, it's going to be great. And uh, so, plan for tomorrow. Um, sober everybody up, and then. I think Ursa, Cal, and Crab Guy set out, and then we could head back to the city, head back to the immortal man. He's the one who put us on this task, said it was paramount that we stop whatever dreadful thing might happen, so... I mean, there's no more answers here. As much as I'd love to help us and more, I don't think there's much more we can do without trying to learn what else. And I mean, it's... We did what we did. They continue on the journey. It, unless something learns to attack you in, the, in your dreams, there's nothing getting through here tonight, so you have nothing to fear. Well, except for that really scary part you just mentioned of something attacking us in our dreams. Well, apparently like a weird face made out of moths that we learned about the other day. That's terrifying. Oh yeah, I forgot about that today. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone see a weird face moth today? I nope. didn't see anything. Nope. Okay, I just good. remember that dreams are like the time. It's always there, but at some point it goes out and a new one comes back. So like I'll drown in my dreams and then I'll die in real life? Is that what you're trying to say? You need to start writing that, some of these things down to Crane. Is, is that why you don't sleep? Because you don't want to dream and die? You seem to have missed the point, but I'll <laughs> say that it's probably because you lack the sleep. Just go to sleep and do not worry. Okay. Oh, he's right. so cool, Hoggy. He's I so think, cool. Oh, no, he's so scary. <laughs> I'll wrap myself in blankets and just <laughs> stare at I'll lean over to Augie and be like, if you get scared in the middle of the night, you know, you can always <laughs> hold my paw. I would, I, I totally don't need to hold your paw, but I might, I, because you maybe know you need truth. me to. Yeah, it's fine. I I imagine you guys like doing my, the sharing of bed put feet my paw to feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to sit in the corner and either clean my gun or play around with it, like twirl it around and stuff. Easy enough. Falling yeah. asleep to the rhythmic sounds of just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, you do go through the, the act of, of cleaning the, the weapon and you have all your tools laid out. And it is like a, a, a slightly meditative process that you've uh, grown accustomed to. You can do it very quickly, but given that you have time, lots of time, um, you do take it methodically, you take it slow, um, and also so as not to uh, be too abrupt with the rest of the crew who are falling asleep here. Um, and shortly after coming back here, um, after a significant journey, a little bit of fright, um, but uh, uh, an evening of like good hearty food, um, and those of you who did have drink, uh, sleep does come to most of the party here. Uh, but to Crane, uh, throw at me a perception check as you're uh, taking kind of an, uh, at least part of this will be an active watch. The other, you still have to rest um, in terms of like, you know, you're not actively, it's a good roll, 15. You're not actively on watch the full breadth of the evening, um, though you don't necessarily need to sleep in the traditional sense. Uh, so 15 plus, what's your perception? Did you say perception? Five. 20. 20 okay great um there are no windows in this uh in this room and with the uh, five of you um it's not particularly cr cramped because three of you are basically child size um one of them is a child uh, and the two herringons are basically children um so it's not like super super tight but the room is not big and with no light coming in it does uh it makes sleep very easy but it does get difficult to kind of tell the passage of time um, but uh, over the evening uh, Decrane you do watch light begin to creep beneath the door as a new sun rises and dawn once more uh, graces the Darkvale Harbor you all awaken a long rest achieved 
Uh, you can go ahead and do a long rest oh, if you yeah. use any of your abilities. You used a, a spell or uh, anything like that, and uh, new portents for our wizard. I'm going to try wizard? to wake up. We don't, we don't have a wizard in this party. No, a wizard, no. <laughs> just, a, just a really shitty cleric. Um, I'm going to try to wake up slightly early so I can try to do my preparing my spells with my spell book that no one knows about. <laughs> um, potentially before some people wake up, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this is a question while you roll your portents. Uh, just based on your overall vibes, I feel like mm-hmm. the Herringons are, are sleeper ins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Very twitchy, though. Like, yeah. one foot kicks the other one. Yeah, ears moving. Uh, and Ursa. You're like is... dogs where you're kicking at each other in your sleep consistently. <laughs> Ursa also dum, dum, dum. Will, will sleep in given the um, given the chance to. So, uh, yeah, Andy, you do have time. Decrane is still awake, but this is not. He would uh, have seen this before, so that wouldn't have been so much. Of this a is nothing new for him. So I think she's also getting lazier with this group in terms of. She's more sure that she can trust them. Oh, but, she's um, letting her guard down a little bit. Mistake number one. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, I should have been me. muted. Those uh, <laughs> portents when you get a second. Yeah, I'm just sending them to you right now. Um, and yeah, I mean, all of you uh, achieve a long rest if you hadn't already done that. Um, and over time, uh, you're all uh, awake and can uh, can do as you wish. I'm changing my spells. Just got to crane spells. As you begin to awaken, just exits the room. I'm not no used words. to having this little spell slots yeah i assume he went to pee it's kind of like do you think he moved at all since we woke up he's just sitting in the exact same chair just you wake up eight hours later and he is still in the same spot as soon as he sees you all begin to awaken he leaves the room with the <laughs> just give him a weird look while i stretch there we go there's a freaking long rest button what spells are we taking today what are we gonna do today uh, this is very stressful guys i know it is I just hit things with a sword last campaign. <laughs> I keep thinking about too um, the the character the character sheet that you guys had that was mine at your place, uh, mm. and you wrote on it uh, spells are for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know that as a spell. I just caster. crossed out the spell section and wrote spells are for nerds. Spells are for nerds. <laughs> I take great offense. Actually, I take great pride. Great, great pride. <laughs> Um, what am I going to take today? Oh, I have alarm? Fuck, I should have done that last night. Right maybe ahead. I'll see. Yeah, that would have been good. Maybe we just grab some food here at this little bar before we bring Ursa to the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys are able to very easily get uh, a serviceable breakfast. It is not a good breakfast, um, but better than better than nothing, maybe. Depends on your Some opinion. gruel. It's it's basically yeah. It's just gray <laughs> orange, um, uh, but it does sit nice and it is warm, which is the really the the key um, uh, for uh, for five of you um, or gruel like two silver more than do enough. We, do we still have Cal's money? I think we do. Uh, I guess he was covering this expenses uh-huh. two silver you got it <laughs> um, and then beyond that um, is there anything else you guys want to do before heading down to the rhyme thresher we got some supplies last time yeah I feel good enough to just go down there yeah I can't think of anything else that I need to accomplish you pack up, um, you make sure you got all of your, your gear, your equipment, you make sure you check the other room and make sure that's all clear. Um, return the two keys to uh, Mallory as you have your breakfast. Um, and Ursa makes sure to grab hers and Cal's pack, um, though uh, she does kind of tap to Crane or Andy a little just to see if you can help carry. Um, uh Cal wore like half his armor, not his full like accoutrement. So there was still elements of his armor. Um, he kept his blade, but he had a, a, a backup blade and all these other things, like still in the room. So like there's there's a, there's a, a hefty pack and and uh, a significant amount of things to also go. So with between Andy easily and and Decreen as well, like 
um, carrying rest of Cal's stuff rather than making the trek back up here. Uh, you all gather their things together um, and make your way back down to the docks below uh, on unless there's anything last minute, but I don't think so. So um, make your way down on the descent again. Um, it's very easy to see um, a concentration of, of, of figures around the far side of the dock. The dock kind of goes like an L around this section of the cove. Um, and the Rhyme Thrasher kind of sits um, on on this side of like as you come down the um, come down the cargo lift, it's on the same side as the dock. So you never had to go very far to go from cargo lift to the Rhyme Thrasher. Um, but as it kind of curves and turns out along the, a side of uh, an extension of of rock and mountain, um, where there was some other like smaller structures and buildings and the uh, spare warehouses and things like that for extra elements of cargo. Um, on the dock to the furthest ship at the end of the dock on the extended left end um, you can see like 15 ish 20 ish people figures have all begun to kind of group up in a mass uh, easy to see as you descend from high on and then make your way low is that you where I go. spotted something I thought maybe uh, not exactly you saw it a little closer than that that's, that's kind of weird over there. Do you guys want to check that out when we get closer? Yeah, I'd say so. You guys make your way down to the docks um, and um, pass by the Rhyme Thrasher, which is um, just dead to the world. No action thus far. Um and you make your way down along the docks and you uh, begin to kind of mill about the crowd and there people are coming and going. Uh, the air of the attitude is dour, is dark. Um, the people who are coming and going are kind of like uh, in hushed conversation back and forth. They don't let their voices kind of carry too large. But as you get closer and closer, um, they seem to be gathered around the Kingsmith. Where that fucking guy was? <laughs> the closer and closer you get, do you get within the crowd? Do you get to the edge of the ship? I'm kind of generally curious. I'm a curious little bunny rabbit. I think I want to get a little closer. Yeah, I'll go with you. We're small. Yeah, the two of you can probably like get in behind the crowd without being yeah. noticed more than behind people's legs giant lady with a huge hat <laughs> weird weird Tail guy with a gun <laughs> so um okay so as as uh ursa andy and and the crane kind of hang back ever so slightly you know you're not you're not hugely uh, separated but just not pushing into the crowd where the other two you're able to slip in between all these kind of rubbernecking people just kind of craning their neck trying to look and see um, and you just you're hearing bits and pieces from all these different people about what what happened um, and why all these people are here uh, and you both of you who get close you can see um coming from the the lower deck kind of up the back stairs not when you first went on to the kingsmith you went to the left i went to like the captain's quarters there was a obviously there's cargo below um and that access is on the right you see uh a pair of like heavy set sailors carrying um a body between them up the steps and down the gangplank towards the amassed crowd and you watch people begin to part um, and you can see a um, uh, kind of a pale purplish tiefling woman um, you're not sure exactly how old she is but uh, thinner smaller black horns at the top of her head um, she's wearing um, like kind of leather armor pieced together um, not particularly nice patchwork in, in places um, 
nicer, nicer kind of boots. Um, but you can clearly see um, she's been slashed through the neck and across the face. Um, clearly harmed and likely cause of death is these massive gashes. Um, you see her body get laid down beside another who's already covered by like canvas tarp. Um, and she is quickly done as well. Uh, and you see another two people begin to exit with another or the third body. Um, this one taller human, you recognize the Duke is um, ha has been clearly slain. Uh, similar um, similar signs of this kind of slashes, but um, possibly possibly worse. Um, both the herring ones. Go ahead and just make uh, perception checks for me. Thought we were gonna have Duke in our lives for so many more episodes. Oh my God. Hardly knew him. Uh, did you say investigation? Investigation or perception? Your weird Pumat soul. <laughs> Not anymore. Pumat solely murdered. Um, 19? Nine. That, mine was perception, by the way. That's fine. Um, yeah, as as the body's being carried out, and they're not on like stretchers or anything, like they're just literally like holding him by like arms and legs. Um, where he's laid down, you can see three fingers are missing, clearly freshly cut. Um, you can see um, there's some significant like work done to his face. He was beaten, um, fresh bruising. His eye looks very swollen um and uh it looks like they were he was worked over pretty significantly is there anyone in the crowd near us uh, obviously there's a crowd i'm more or less i guess looking for a face i could be like what, what what the heck happened to you uh you can look directly beside you and there's just kind of uh kind of a heavier set man longer kind of blonde hair let's like fresh like wet from like having come out of like whatever uh, bath and uh, would, would serve the morning here um, already like gripped by ice um, but uh, kind of heavier set looking and just I don't know I, uh, I only just had, had breakfast at Mad Jack's and they said there was said there was a murder I had to come down and see for myself looks like multiple murders this is grisly I haven't had anything like this in in Darkvale. Not, not in my recollection. I was, was going to ask, is this a normal thing? Uh, yeah, you live on the fringe. You see lots of lots of things, but a community like this, everyone knows everyone. Not many people can get away with something like this. Well, speaking of, I know the Duke, but do you recognize the other two? No, uh, they were his crew. I think uh, her name was Mina. I don't know the other. It's wild. Is anything missing or stolen? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. As much as everyone here's a, a crew, stuff comes up for grabs, you know. Yeah. People are going to start grabbing. Um, there's not so much law here as uh, a community. I guess I'll have to wait for Rusty to make a call. Who's Rusty? Uh, he's, uh, he's a tinkerer in town. Uh, I see Nettie's face just beside me perk up at Rusty. <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a tinkerer in town that uh, the captains have kind of come to recognize as a pseudo, not a mayor, not elected, but uh, just someone who kind of knows a little bit more, a little bit about everything. So we kind of make some decisions for us to help. Is right. Rusty well liked around the town? He just kind of starts as you just appear. Oh God! So oh, that's my that's my friend. He does that. What Lord, did you ask, the crane? Yeah, he's you're a that. pale fellow. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, he's. Uh, He's well liked when he's not drunk. 
And even when he's drunk, he's still liked. It's just, uh, he can be a little bit more belligerent. Okay. Enemies. Rusty? Um, I don't know. No more than any man. Why so many questions? Just generally curious. You were just such a kind face in the crowd. Oh, thanks. And the nicest ones are usually the ones with the most to hide. I, well, Not you. I'm talking about Rusty. We don't even... We haven't even met Rusty. <laughs> Nettie's really excited to meet Rusty. She's been talking about him all day. We finally get to meet Rusty! We're not missing this opportunity. Let's go find him at once. This is what I'm afraid of. Maybe we should get... If Rusty's in here yet, maybe we should get... I don't want... Um, Ursa to see these three bodies. Maybe we go tell Cal about this. Easy enough, you are able to kind of uh, pull yourselves from the crowd, and uh, it is dispersing ever so slightly. Um, but there are still plenty of people out around the ship and and talking amongst one another and trying to decide what to do and uh, sending people themselves to go and find Rusty and any of the other captains. Um, and as uh, you guys return to the Rhyme Thrasher, um, the crew and Verglass and uh, and Cal are, are are just kind of stirring, but not really fully awake yet. Just like kind of half knock, awkwardly. Does anyone even remotely move? Uh, yeah, a couple of heads kind of look up for a second, like one eye open before kind of laying back down. Um, one hand just kind of points in the direction of a of a closed door that you assume to be like a captain's quarters. Yeah. How uh, how early is it? it? Can't be that early. We got in pretty late, but it's like nine nine thirty. Okay. Oh. Uh put an ear to the door. <laughs> Heavy snoring, very clearly. Oh, shoot. Um, uh, has anyone seen um, the other fella, Cal? He's, he was with the captain last night. No one? The, okay. Yeah, just like more tossing and turning hands overhead. Great. Um, what's all that? Uh, why don't I say you find somewhere to settle down and just take a sit? Um, we will try to find Cal and uh, try to figure out what our next steps are, yeah? I'm sure he's here. Yeah, yeah I'm sure he's here. I mean, just... Cal! Oh, oh, Cal! Cal! She just starts yelling. All the, oh, oh. All the guys are just, like, covering their ears. Uh, and about six more shouts, the captain's door opens, uh, and you see Cal, like, rush out, like, you know, shirt off, and, like, still has his, his breeches on, uh, but does have his sword drawn, and just, like, Cal. blearily. <sighs> what time is it? It's more not that early. Yeah, surprisingly not not ridiculously early. We've missed some excitement already. Were you sleeping? Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't had a night like that. Well, it's been some time. Ooh. Um. Uh. But any y'all know how to make coffee? Uh, it's not great, but I've done it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, he kind of sits over at the table, goes to, like, sheath his sword, but doesn't have a sheath, and it just kind of clacks <laughs> beside him. Clang! <laughs> um. <coughs> hey, you got a cough, Cal. <laughs> it was one of those nights. <laughs> uh, what kind of action did I miss? Uh, Grizzly kind, nothing we were a part of, but there's a boat, a couple skiffs over, and uh, some people died, three people. Died how? Like Grizzly. 
like look at Ursa, look back at him. Uh, all, right. <coughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, she gets that. They were they were murdered. <laughs> um. He just goes into the into the room and kind of you hear like a big heavy <laughs> as he wakes up the captain, and you hear like a a, a conversation happening between the two of them, uh, just like muffled. As he comes back, and says, "All right, look, I uh, I think it's best that we just keep our heads down in this one. We don't need to get drawn into anything going on here." Let's just hope it's a weird coincidence and it can't be anything tied to us. It's not us. We were with us all night. All four of us were together. Five of us. It wasn't us at all. We're going to get going sooner than later. I'd rather not be here if there's any kind of investigation or anything like that going on. Maybe we should say goodbye now then. Yeah, why don't we go up top? And, uh, yeah, uh, give me, give me just a, a few minutes. I'll meet you up there. Okay. You're not wearing a shirt. That is correct. Oh, wait, you have your stuff. Oh, thanks. And he grabs the stuff uh, and just like throws it down into, um, one of the, um, hammocks. Uh, Ursa, um, Glass said we can stay. Uh, he's happy to take us out in the fields. Um, I'll be working my part off here and you'll be just passenger. Um, and uh, you'll be safe. You'll be cold, but you'll be safe. Why don't you go up with them? I'll be up in a minute. She just kind of nods. I have a little notebook that I keep in my like breast pocket. As we like get up there, I'll take out my little like colorful quill and I'm gonna scribble something down on it, um, okay. and then I'll rip it out and I'll give it to Ursa, and I'll say, um, "This is kind of an address. It's from it's for the little city, town, village of Maribel, um, and if you send a letter there, wherever you end up, um, just address it to um, either Bessie and Bakey." Or to Enid and I, and we'll, we'll just get it next time we go back home. All right, thank you. And that way we can catch up. Whether we mail you back, or we come visit you, or you come visit us. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like that. Um, um, I don't know how. I've never sent mail before. I don't really know how it works. Um, don't like shepherds take mail? Then wouldn't you know this, Andy? Uh, not not so much. No, not not like through the mail. It's like it's more like um, more like a, a network of just verbal communication. Everyone just kind of remembers everything. Everyone gets at everyone's business. It's quite messy. Hmm. I, no, I don't have to go for private things. I know it ex it exists. I know it was in it was in Grill. I just never had reason to send a letter to anyone. So I, I look forward to it. You got two quill pals. You can send us notes. Yeah. Thanks. Um. And I, I know, um, I know Cal will say his thanks, but I really appreciate you guys getting me out before whatever was going to happen happened. Um, and I really appreciate teaching me how to do the light. Yes, remember, just be careful of that one, right? Yeah, I know. Um, but I've got to open a little bit at a time, and it'll get better. I'm going to be better the next time you see me. Good. Yeah, just remember, this is just, um, this isn't your destination. You're not done yet. It's just a stop on the way. Yeah. And, and Cal said, you know, once we were out on the ice, I could I could practice more, so I could I can do all I can do all kinds of lights out on the on the ice. There's no one around, um, and even if it if it gets too big and too bright, well, it's okay. It's out on the ice. It's not going to hurt anybody. 
You just yeah, remember, you, you're still there. So you got to keep yourself safe, too. But also get up to a little mischief. Well, uh, I don't... I'm going to try. Uh, I, mean, I can't... Just like a, a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I can't let you guys have all the fun. That's right. Because if you then catch up with us and you haven't gotten into any trouble, then you'll have so much trouble to catch up on. It's better that you get your mischief going, fiascos, all that. I, um, I don't have anything to, to give you all. Um, she looks around. Let me try. She holds her hands in front of her, kind of cupped. And she closes her eyes. I cast Bless. I'm going to put my hand over her hand, too, and cast Bless. Um, and you watch in her hands um, this kind of... Um, what's that... Uh, what's that stuff that you put, like... Uh, it's like... Uh, elephant toothpaste it's like where it looks like uh like black tendrils are like suddenly forming in like an, a chemical reaction like the magnetic sand stuff no or like like, oh, like, like tar yeah it's, it's like, like a like a black yeah. like uh it almost looks like tendrils of black like weird cool. stuff is like erupting but uh it's like oh that. i know what you're talking about yeah it's yeah, like, yeah, a, it's like a chemical reaction experiment. yeah you watch in inner inner palms um these green crystalline structures just begin to like and they begin to just like roil and and grow in her hands and you watch as she's like concentrating and shaping and twisting um and she kind of finishes uh with just like a little flare of light um and she kind of holds in her hands and then just kind of her her head kind of twists and turns a little. It's like, well, it's a start. Um, was it that a d20 roll, or was that something different? It wasn't a d20 roll. Oh, damn it. Okay. That would have been cool. Uh, and she um, uh, kind of opens her, her hands, and she gives um, identical green... Um, she says, they're supposed to be rabbits. And she gives you guys um, each little, like, emerald rabbits that are basically like a lump with two points. Oh. <laughs> um, and she hands over uh, to DeCrane. Um, she, she hands you um, what looks just like a triangle, like a really thin triangle. And she's like, I was trying to make a bird. Um, I'm trying. Um, and over to, to Andy. Um, she doesn't give you an animal, um, but it's more a like an an egg, and it kind of looks like your astrolabe, um, but just like a, a little egg of of this kind of emerald glass. And you can see it's like structure inside. Um, there's just this faint little bit of like movement inside, like just almost like there's captured water or something within it. Uh, and she she kind of hands this one to you and says, "I think that one turned out well." Yeah, you did a great job. Who knows? Maybe there's a uh, feature in creation. I hope so. Something fun, something to practice being creative with you. Yeah, I I just feel like I have a lot of something. Just gotta figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for this wonderful gift. We'll treasure uh, them always. You hear a heavy stomping up as Cal, now fully like adorned in his in his armor, um, and uh, uh, with a, a, a mug of of coffee makes his way up onto the deck uh, and you can see kind of around him the crew all begin to kind of pile out and you see the sails begin to unfurl and they're beginning to get the, the ship kind of at ready and you can hear Verglass kind of shouting off in the distance to the crew he says we're at it we're going 
I don't know what's happened here in town, and honestly, I, I ain't got the time to figure it out. It's not our place. We need to go. I don't want anything to jeopardize what we got already got here. So um, I'm sorry to cut and run on you so quick, but I uh, I think it's just for for the best that we get out of get out of dodge, so to speak. Um, keep the rest of that coin. I ain't gonna need it where I'm going, and maybe it'll help you a little. I know it's not much, but uh, oh, thank you. I hope. Uh, I hope it helps you wherever you guys are going next. And um, like I said, uh, days ago, I don't have much to offer you except my gratitude. And y'all came out of came out of nowhere to help a couple of strangers with nothing more than than your words, nothing more than a question and a hope to hopeful belief that we were good people. I still stand by that. I think y'all have proven that y'all are good people too. We could use more, every, more of you out there. Every stranger starts as a, uh, every friend starts as a stranger. You never know who you can run into. But yeah. we'll, we'll learn what we can. And if we, um, if anything about our problem ever, ever uh, comes across us again, we'll make sure to get word out. I really appreciate that. I hope to see you guys sometime soon. Uh, not that I expect y'all to be out in the ice fields any day now, but if you ever find any kind of answers, anything that can help Ursa and help us find a, a next step, uh, we'll be we'll be waiting. We'll be ready. And um, if y'all ever need a blade, ever need someone to stand at your side. You know, I'll always be there. Thank you. Stay, uh, stay warm. I'll try. Miss, guys, be clear. Cheers. Um, I, yeah. Y'all travel safe. All right. Uh, he gives, um, kind of like handshakes to each of you, to those of you who, uh, who take him. Um, hug his, I hug his leg awkwardly. He kind of pats your head awkwardly. <laughs> um, uh, Crane, as he, uh, kind of gets to you, he gives you like a, like, you know, a classic soldier's, uh, grip on the arm. Uh, says, keep an eye out for these, these folks. They're uh, they're better than this world deserves. And a world like ours can take people that are good like them, and it can wear them down. It can beat them down. It can be too much. I think you're a lot like me, or I'm a lot like you, however you want to look at it. A soldier at heart. You gotta stand up for them. You gotta fight for them. You gotta be the shield. Just protect them, all right? You're a good man, Cal. The world only takes, but you've you've given so much, and I I heed your call. Thank you. I hope to see you again, Crane. I'm sure we will see each other again. I'm just saying, Eddie, mine's better. She just did a better job on mine. Yours is okay, but mine's better. Yeah, her, mine's clearly the better one. She made mine first. Of course it's gonna be a better one. No, she, yours was the practice. Andy, look at this one. See? <laughs> see, see, the thing that this one has has um, a little bit clear in the ears, right? But then this one has like charm. So like, you know, it's just like two different techniques, right? Lamont, oh, she's, she's too nice. She won't answer. No. It's clearly, it's mine. Whatever. Uh, you guys clear off the side of the Rhyme Thrasher as the gangplank is pulled back and you watch the ship begin to sail out into the ice, slow but sure, um, with a final wave from Ursa at the back of the ship. Uh, she and Cal and the Rhyme Thrasher sail off uh, into a cold, bitterly cold morning. Uh, the rest of the day and the adventures to be had is yours. What do we do? 
kind of gonna meet Rusty. It's, he's been hyped up a lot. Is there still a bit of a, a crowd or people gathered where that was? You can see in the time that you've um, had this conversation and said your goodbyes, um, the bodies have been moved to the right cargo platform awaiting to go up still. Um, and there is now the crowd has kind of shifted there rather than at the kingsmith itself um there's still a handful of people over that way but they're more just like like their ship is the next one so they're just like hanging out chatting um, but at the cargo lift there is a, a small group um of about seven or eight people uh and there is seemingly one person kind of like that people are looking to what, what are they looking like uh, at a distance, you can see um, kind of a shorter uh, human man, um, kind of like a little bit of a mop of uh, it looks like like dark black hair that's um, difficult to kind of make out, but it just kind of looks like a mop of black hair um, spattered with like red in, in amongst it. Um, he's got a, a goatee that is and, and like some scruff on the sides of a face that is relatively worn um, He's got a like a thick like scarf, uh, a red scarf around his neck that is splotchy, um, and a long um, leather duster of of like kind of a rich brown leather duster over very very like um, patched like overall pants and and boots. Uh, but he's like like five seven, like he's not particularly imposing, relatively skinny. Um, uh, but the, all these other kind of larger figures, um, are kind of looking to him and listening to his, kind of, his calls. To great. I think that's Rusty. I just, I stare at him for a bit. Just to <laughs> get a good read on him. Sure. Uh, make a, you can make a perception or, um, or insight, uh, your choice. Let's go with insight. <laughs> nice one. Uh, that one. Just too far away to like get a good read on, um, and uh, given the the goodbye, your your like perceptions are just not quite all there yet to to nail down. I keep hopping up and being like, I think that's rusty. <laughs> can I send out? Can I send out Toot Sweet to look at him? Sure. This oh, also just also tell them like you two can go introduce yourselves. Really? Just remember, this guy would be bad news. But okay, it doesn't hurt to say hi. It's Rusty. We've known him for like a day. He's Please gonna help. be amazing. Let's go say hi to him. Let's go say hi. Bring Toot Sweet. Okay, Toot Sweet. Then the next time, my. Pops out, <laughs> just like cross-eyed. Okay, <laughs> I will uh, at first be hopping up in excitement, and then try and play it cool, and then just slowly. You guys make your way closer, um, and uh, in the middle of the conversation, you see um, this guy look to. Uh, Oh, I don't know his name. It doesn't matter. He doesn't call him by his name. Um, this He says to this silver dragonborn. Yeah, we've seen this guy. He was in the bar. Uh, he says to him, uh, actually, I will also point out, now that you're closer, this was the drunk guy at your bar. Rusty was the drunk guy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we gave him drinks. He loves us. He was so nice. <laughs> He's going to go great. It, it wasn't until you got up close that you recognized the duster, uh, oh, and indeed, this is this is the guy who was drunk at your bar. Daddy, that's the guy. Uh, we he, know him. We've known him. <laughs> he leans to the the silver dragonborn uh, and just says, um, "I don't know, man. Just go and check the kingsmith over once more. Like, we can't have people just fucking dropping like flies around here. You got to tell me there's something there to find." Uh, and the dragonborn just, I looked, there's nothing. I looked it twice, there's still nothing. Rusty, I don't know what you want. And he said, 
I mean, I, the people are going to need some kind of answers. I, I don't know what to tell you, but you got to bring me something. Do you need, do you need help? Oh, hi. Um, hey. You. I know us. you from somewhere. Yeah. How do I know you? You so kindly uh, took our drinks yesterday because they were hurting us. Oh. Oh. Well, uh, thanks. I uh, appreciate Thank it. Thank you. You, know? oh, you. you did us a favor. Hi, this is my. That's my sister. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Rusty. It's weird that you know me. Um, what's, uh, what are your names? My Eat names. Oh, Eat it. Hi, nice to meet you. Augustus, but you can call Augustus. me August. August, sure. Um, y'all are, you guys are new in, uh, in town. Um, uh, everyone kind of is like looking at, at Rusty and he's looking at you guys just like, you wouldn't happen to have been over to the Kingsmith yesterday, would you? Yeah, yeah, we were there. Mm -hmm. The guys kind of all look and they begin to slowly kind of encircle ever so slightly. Thank you, it's cold. Uh, yeah, you know, we were know. probably like one of the last people to see him alive, if you're being honest. Hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. We kind of got in a disagreement because his stuff was just so lame. You know what? It happens. Um, but Jay, you know, the Duke could be a real prick, couldn't he? <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> Just want to shut him up. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've had that conversation with some of the guys before. You got to kind of walk away before something bad happens. You know, that's what I had to do. I said, I don't want to look at this dumb stuff anymore. Dead newt in a jar. And he wouldn't even tell us the name of the newt. Oh, that's just rude. That's just rude. That's what we thought. So what happened uh, when your conversation turned there yesterday? Oh. We just think, left. Yeah, I think we just left. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What time was that about? Um. Maybe just around dusk? I don't know. We weren't really ourselves. Yeah, I was feeling out of it. We had a weird night. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a really so, bad ale. <laughs> you know. Some bad ale. <laughs> you know. Kind of feeling out of it. I do, I do know. I know that. Um, say. Uh, those are our friends. Those, those two. Mm, <laughs> the real pale one and the real tall one? If we wave at them, maybe they'll wave back. Uh, uh, one of them did, anyways. Say, would uh, would you guys care to join us up upper Upper Vale? Sure. We, we was we were totally okay to help look in the boat if you wanted some more help. I think we'll be okay on that front, right? And he kind of taps the silver dragonborn, and and. He kind of looks down at you guys and looks over Rusty and says, It's not there, man. And he kind of looks up. What? Look at the paws. They got paws, not claws. And Rusty kind of grabs your hand and just like brings his like little like optical lens down from his hair. And grabs Enids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there ain't any blood on them. Wait, why would we have blood on our paws? Yeah, we clean them every morning and night. Yeah. We're not mammals! I mean, we are. Well, we are mammals, but we're not, you know. You know what we mean. Yeah, no, they can't have done it. Look at them. They're, they're too nice. <laughs> The silver dragon board just kind of like hits him on the shoulder, and then he's like, "I'll go look one more time, I guess." And he just stumbles off towards the king. Lean over to the crane. I think it's going well. Like it's, it's going okay. Everyone's laughing. As we're like almost putting handcuffs. 
<laughs> Rusty sits down on a on a crate and he's like massages his temples and just says, "Oh, you ever get a job and you just I don't know how you got there and you wish you didn't and then all you want to do is is just kind of forget." And just like kind of get away from all your responsibilities and just kind of, oh, I mean, you ever get that? Of, yeah, that's kind of how we got here. That's kind of how everyone gets here, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Oh, look, let me be, let me be straight with you. Um, yeah, those guys are dead. Um, yep. And... We have no idea who did it. And we'd rather not go all the way to Cardin to get an investigator. We could go down to the Grey Keep and get the Kandorian Company. But as soon as you get the Kandorian Company involved, there's some stuff that goes on around here that we've all accepted and we've <laughs> all agreed is fine because mm -hmm. life needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got to make coin one way or another. Mm -hmm. As long as nobody gets hurt, what's the matter? Well, now somebody got hurt. It's real bad. It's a problem, right? Yeah. yeah. So, somehow, it's come to me to figure it out uh, and to, to provide answers for the people and to make the decision of whether I... I, I you know, uproot our whole society and bring in the law or I figure it out some other way. And in truth, I don't have another way. And we got any drinks. We, we did earlier. Do you think it's weird that he's missing fingers and he kind of looked like he was Yes. Yeah, there's the lifts fingers. up the body, his, his hand is totally fine. Oh. Wait, what? Yeah. Can I see the other hand? It's missing three fingers. Oh, that hand. Oh, that oh, that oh. hand's missing. Oh, wow, I didn't look at that one. No, yeah, that, that one missing three fingers. Yeah, I suppose that's odd. And then the other two weren't. They were no. just kind of. Just kind Here. Of... Ah, nobody's around. He pulls the blankets, the car, the canvas kind of tarps off of the three bodies. And he says, Andy, Andy, the curtain, come here. Yeah, sure, bring him in. Are y'all like, Hi. you know, detectives or something? Yes. Oh, no. Well, the. These, these guys are really good at, at looking at, at stuff, and uh, we're here to help if we can. Great. Hey, what's, 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 hey, what's the vibe hey. here? Oh, this is great. Okay, good. This is okay. Um, Y'all are going to be the special investigation unit that I brought in. Can I have a badge? Uh, <gasps> yes. If he gets one, I want one too. You can all have badges. Yes. <laughs> I can make up a, a badge. No problem, actually. Perfect. I got some scraps. It's not going to be, you know, the, the finest you're going to find, Perfect. but it'll be a badge. Ugh, can't wait. Okay. So here's, so you, um, uh, I don't have anything to offer you in return. You just said. You give us two Besides badges. the badge. Done. Done deal. Okay, great. We are A-OK. -okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, okay, so, I looked over the bodies, uh, clearly not as closely as you, but the other two, I did see big slash marks. Yeah. So, apologies for uh, assuming uh, maybe uh, some of your of your nature could have done something like this, uh, but I think uh, I, I think it's probably something a little bit more ghastly, something with claws uh, <laughs> or a big ass knife or something. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I did see: these two 
uh, and he he moves like the the canvas even further, um, and the human male who you haven't seen yet um he's like fully exposed and you see this kind of like gangly um kind of scruffy red beard and and red hair um he's got some tattoos on his on his arms um some actually really really nice like almost like padded armor um it, that's it's it's not even it doesn't even look like armor it looks more like clothes that like padded uh, clothes but you can see the stitching in it and then you can see it's like reinforced in areas. It looks like well-crafted. Um, he's missing his boots uh, and his bare foot. Um, but both of the, the tiefling and this guy's uh, arms are manacled together with a chain. So they're each uh, at a wrist is manacled and there's a chain linking the two of them. Um, the chain, however, I should point out, has been has been uh, snipped, has been broken. Um, but it, uh, he he alludes to the fact that it, they were they were they were chained together, uh, arms through one of the portholes um, oh. near where uh, Duke was. Uh, well, he was in a chair, um, tied up um, when we found him. Um, So, I should have been, I suppose. Uh, I should have found the signs of uh, torture here a little earlier, given all the pieces, but it's all coming together now. It's all, it's all happening. Did you say he's missing a foot? No, his boots are missing. His, he just has a bare foot. Bare gotcha. Feet. Gotcha. Um, the, uh, he just, uh, Rusty just kind of looks over at the three of them and says, look, I, I don't deal with this particularly well um i don't like looking at this mm -hmm. um but if there's anything you can can tell me or anything you can find on the kingsmith to like get us in a direction uh or or to help me avoid having to get the company involved um we can all collectively agree to put this behind us sure. yeah no one wants that we can uh, help. I mean, uh, we didn't know him well, long. Uh, we only saw him just ever, you know, a little bit, but he seemed really interesting. Couldn't hear any more stories. No. It's a shame. I didn't know any of them, uh, realistically. Okay. Could I do, while we're looking at, maybe I guess starting with the Duke, could I do a medicine check to try and see if I can find out his cause of death? Unless it's super obvious, but maybe even like... Yeah, make a medicine check. Go ahead. <clears throat> After, could I do a perception check on the Dragonborn guy? Oh, pretty good. Ooh. Sure. Um, you, sorry, you no longer see him. He's gone on the ship. Um, oh. You would have watched him go on to the Kingsmith. Roll an 18 on the dice plus four, so 22. Nice. Um, there are clear signs of torture. Three fingers mm -hmm. missing. He's been beaten pretty badly. Uh, there is um, on his face and on his clothes, there is a a residue that's like within the bruising and within the um, the cuts and wounds. Um, and you see it in all three bodies in the um, actually, sorry, two things. Within the wounds themselves, you see this um, flaking of um, like rust. In each each of the wounds, there's like a you know that you know if you have a, a piece of metal where just the bits are like kind of falling off, you've got that rusty kind of bits that are kind of within each of these larger, heavier slashes. Um, but specifically on the Duke within the like bruising areas and kind of on his lapel and on his clothes while you're kind of investigating and like checking him out. Um, you pull your paw away at one point and you can see your hand has left a bit of an imprint uh, and you can feel this, uh, this dust is kind of all left all over the body. 
Is this dust similar to the dust we saw outside of Ursus home? It's as similar as uh, kind of a dust gray <laughs> dust can be. Interesting, interesting. With the fingers in particular, does that look like a blade cut them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's like a single slash. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not particularly good at, uh, like you mentioned, I'm also not great with dead people and uh, all that blood and stuff. Um, but we were here yesterday, um, and I did kind of look at the wares. Do you want me to go look inside to see if anything's missing? That help? Yeah, totally fine. Yeah, if you uh, okay. if you guys want to go and join, uh, uh, I'm going to find out what his name is right <laughs> now. it matters. Jebediah. No. Stephen. Howard. No, Steve. Oh, it's his name. Yeah, he's go on him. Go in and after him. Um, explain that. Yeah, you know, I gave you the all clear. Okay, that's gonna look great. Yeah. On the way, if there is a point where I can, I'm so large. Uh, <laughs> hide in a way where I could potentially cast a tech magic before I get up to the other dude, without being like. Is it a long enough walk? As an action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as an, an action. action. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Pull your hat okay. down. Pull your hat down. Yeah, you can kind of... It, it's going to look very weird that you're going to literally tuck off to the side for six seconds. But, like... Not from you, these guys. Just from, like... No, just if anyone's watching you. It's going to look weird as everyone's yeah, yeah. just, like, walking, walking, walking. Do, 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 do. And then come back out six seconds later. Like, it's fine. Okay. There's not that many people here who are going to be looking at you at this point. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, easy enough that you cast that as the rest of you make your way to the Kingsmith. Mm. And you board and head down into the cargo hold where you're, uh, immediately as soon as there's the heavy footsteps of everyone coming in, you see the silver dragonborn pop his head back. And, oh, it's you again. Yeah, we were, we were here yesterday and I thought it might be helpful because uh, we had a look at the stuff to see if any of the stuff's missing. Right. All right. All right. Well, Rusty said it. Come on. I'm going to try to use the same detect magic to see if the same things ping because those would obviously seem like the That's most right. important. Make an investigation check with advantage. Okay. Come on now. Okay. Not bad. Even better. Okay. Sick. Investigation isn't as good as Mary. Oh, with a minus. No, sorry, that's insight. <laughs> for plus three, so that's twenty-one. Great. Uh, there are no magical signatures in the mm. cargo hold, and as you get up to check the kind of um, the like <clears throat> shop area, um, the door is locked. But there is a like two windows on the left and right side, and as you kind of peer in and look through the windows, nothing is pinging within um, as as magical. Do you have like the key to get in here? This is where the stuff was. Um, he looks around and just, <laughs> just kicks the door in in a heavy slam and just <laughs> uh, and just slams it open. That'll do. And he cool. makes his way inside. I'm going to make a show of like going to where the places where I already know that nothing's probably going to ping is. Be like, okay, there's a thing here. There's a thing over there. There's these weird little things that apparently clean things. Uh, maybe he puts them somewhere else at night or maybe they're gone. Yeah, there's nothing magical pinging right now. Okay. Does this place look like it's been ransacked? Does it look pretty neat? Good question. Uh, it actually looks surprisingly neat. The is there like where the action was uh you yeah. can see there's blood and there's some significant damage all around the cargo area um there were like hammocks that would have been hanging they were slashed there's all kinds of, of damaging signs in the lower side but the like kind of shop area um is surprisingly you know untouched can i while andy's maybe leading this turn to nettie and be like nettie do you do you smell the smell down here? Would I smell it currently or no? Make a survival check. Okay. 
15. Um, as you kind of go around while all this is happening, in the lower kind of cargo area, you guys kind of begin going through an investigation. Um, and as you kind of go pass by and pass by and kind of doing like almost like a, a back and forth, just like scan and check, um, you're, you're actively avoiding the middle of the room where this chair was because it's still slick with blood. Um, and obviously we don't want to get too close to that, but eventually your passes do bring you close. And there's a point where, um, you can see like a blade has stabbed into the wood, um, kind of in the back of the chair, um, like through the chair down into the wood. You can see the trajectory of like, uh, a thin, um, you know, two, three inches uh, in, in width, but otherwise like a thin blade has has cut down in um, and has left uh, like a significant uh, indent and dig into the wood of, of the of the floor. And as you kind of get closer, um, you do get that sense, that scent once more. Um, it is this kind of like immediate gut churning rot that is coming like from this wound in the ship oh Augie, there it is there. oh yeah do you smell it can I go closer to it and kind of investigate that little thing yeah you get close and sure enough you can smell this kind of rot now that like you're you're close and she points right to this spot the closer and closer you get to this like you know point that there's this this pungent rotting vegetation smell Andy does this look weird to you at all just Looks knowing like she has her, her magic thing up there's no magic gotta, coming from it or anything I gotta go within 10 feet of it give me an arcana check Very medium. Come on, cleric wizard. Oh, where's my skills? 16. Yeah, 16 is good enough. Um, the best way to describe this is um, kind of similar to how Ursa's um, uh, like crystalline byproduct of her magic was created. Um, it's not innately magical, but you can see um under like the magically enhanced vision of detect magic there are those elements of like the 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 like rust flakes of something um they have an otherworldliness to them that gives a little bit of a um of that kind of magical flair like it's not a school it's not something but with that enhancement to your vision you can sense there's something extra uh something hit these it didn't look like a normal blade um something different that's for sure something off is there while i'm down here is there anything else that's popping to tech magic nothing that's popping to tech magic unfortunately Okay, I mean, that's an answer on itself. So none of the magic little wares he has are here anymore. Do we think... Oh, maybe, there's a good amount, too. Do we think maybe he stumbled across something that he shouldn't have had when someone came to get it back or wanted it? I don't... But here's the, here's the funny thing. If if I was to... Oh, God, can't even imagine that. If I was going to gonna kill someone, and I knew eventually they'd be fair. Why wouldn't you stage it to look like a robbery or something? It's weirder that the door was locked and that the stuff was just kind of quietly gone. Maybe it was more of an exchange. Maybe he, you know, it was a negotiation, something else that went real bad. That looked like a real bad negotiation. It seemed like they were trying to find something and maybe were trying to like, why wouldn't you just kill him if you're right? If you're doing, if you're doing a robbery, you just grab everything and go, or just murder everyone. But they were torturing this guy. There's something else they needed. 
push it over and down here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff missing. Is there? How do you know? Yeah. Well, because I, he told me about a bunch of the stuff yesterday, and none of it's here. There was these little things that clean stuff. There was this case that had, a, like, a spoon in it, and it would tell you if stuff was poisoned or not. That's mm-hmm. not in here. There's, like, a bunch of uh, vials of different kinds of potions and stuff. They're all gone. All There's right. some other things that uh, Leah can't remember, but, <laughs> but Andy can. <laughs> Is she smart? <laughs> She's smarter than me. Is the newt gone? So, I was such a good cue. The newt was still there. <laughs> Thank God. But the goddamn newt is there, which means they only took important things. <laughs> or maybe missed the most important one. All right. Well, I'll go tell Rusty that nothing's coming out of here, but. I got, I got nothing else. I don't know why he even wanted me here. I don't know. I don't know what to do here. I think we should just get the company out of here. Well, uh, I think it depends on... I think it depends on uh, what the rest of the town it is, uh, what they're looking for, too. And, you know, if... Right. Um... For now, uh, there was a um, uh, August uh, August found some like dust stuff that was on the bodies and also on here. It looks kind of weird, um, and we're gonna try to help figure out what that is. Well, we can. All right. Well, you're free to do whatever you like. I guess I don't really care. And he just he makes right. his way out. That's honestly probably the best case scenario. Yeah. Um. Hey, should we, like... Burn the ship. A wild decision. Um, I think that would look wildly suspicious. Not, you say. not at all. Um, should we try to figure out... How much time are we devoting to this? I just, as much as um, I, I'd love to help, I don't know what we're going to do if they decide to bring the company in. That might also um, not be great. For... You know, newcomers come in town and something bad happens. It always looks suspicious. Yeah, I, I think we would just go at that point. I don't want to be stuck here and this town is too cold. It's freezing. Okay, um, Kyle, could I... I don't know if I have anything to put it in. Try to, like, chisel out one of those flakes of rust just to have... Wrap it in a little uh, something, find like a, a loose jar or something to put it in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's okay. plenty of like empty jars or jars that can become empty here. Um, and That's easy like enough. Like oregano. <laughs> get, uh, it'll take a little bit of time to like chip away at some of them, uh, at some of the wood to like get pieces. They're not big pieces of, of like big, thick pieces of rust. It's really small stuff. Um, but you're able to get. Uh, a semblance of a sample. Uh, Dr. Crane, based solely on our experiences in the last few weeks, I have some kind of feeling that you're kind of used to this stuff more than we are. What's your take here? Torture is usually the sign of desperation. We need to find someone who is in a hurry. We need to find someone who had something to gain from these murders. Super profound. Should we? That's so wise. Oh, so I'm staggeringly wise. I've seen too many deaths in my time. You're like 20. <laughs> Maybe. I think I look older than you are. What is it? Um, Have we considered Rusty as a suspect? No, because that. that's, yeah. Did you we don't know Rusty? that. We don't know that. We had drinks together. He can this... stomach that ale. <laughs> Off the table. Off the table. Do we think... Is it worth staking out the docks at night to see if something comes back? Nettie smelt... That's... Yeah, Nettie smelt the same thing that she caught wind of last night in the boat hull. 
Is it still creeping around? Did it not find what it needs? I think that's a good idea. And I also would suggest maybe we consider setting a trap using some oh. bait. Yes, love bait. Great idea. Like we could, who would be bait? Well, would one of you volunteer? One of us be bait for a spooky. Very Hondo question. <laughs> <laughs> Stakeout is Showing the Hondo the move. Youth is naivete. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one thing to keep in mind is, like you said, it's it's desperation, but they they kill these folks. Um, when we don't know what it is they're after, why would they pretend to see the crime? They know there's a bunch of people here. If they Kyle, do I? didn't get what they wanted. How do we know they didn't get what they wanted? Oh, shoot. You know, there's some like super creepy magic that allows you to talk to dead people. It's beyond me. That would be super helpful. Yeah, if you were like a... I mean, clerics know that stuff, don't they? Yeah, sometimes, I think. It's very creepy, though. You just don't that, want to do it, but it'd be useful. Is that part of cleric school? Um, definitely not there yet. It's high-level okay. stuff. We could, definitely at least a third-level spell. Well, we could <laughs> maybe it's higher than that. Someone shows up at night. Let's start they, with a stakeout. If they instantly knew what they wanted and came here, they would have taken it, maybe killed them. But it's just so weird that they torched the guy who keeps the magical stuff and then stole all the magical stuff. And that magical stuff was pure rubbish. Bloody spoon. That if it's poison, disappears. No more spoon. Now I'm out one spoon. Terrible. I'm trying to remember what else he told us. There was a spoon, there was the jar of Tide Pods, um, <laughs> a bunch of potions, and oh, there was like a dodecahedron thing I was about to ask for, and then Kevin insulted the man, and then took it out. <laughs> Maybe it's the dodecahedron. <laughs> I think. I think it was something particularly cool. It's like, I'm going to save that for last. And then we got... Um... Well, it could be one of those things. Well, it's I mean, either one of those things is really important, or it's a cover-up. Oliver, can you please stop turning off our air purifier? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my god. What is it, gang? Stakeout? A little stakeout tonight? Well, it's like the morning, though. My concern, too, is... Now we're out of game. We don't want to be here too long, because there's still potentially some Arcana class folks... We Maybe promised, on our tail. Oh, we promised true. Rusty. We promised Rusty we would take a look into it for about 25 minutes. He Where is his badges? Here's what you want you do. If you want if you want to stir something up, if you want a reaction. Okay. Especially during the stakeout. Oh. We've got to accuse someone during the stakeout. See how they react right now. So no, right now. What? We accuse you did someone. It. You did it. We've we accuse someone. We see how they react. Shakus. 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 It'll spur them to take action against us or against another target. Why would we want action against us? That sounds terrible. Less attractive. That is what we great. want. If we want to catch this murderer. Why, though? I need to know how oh. that works. But let, let me just. Let me just lay it straight. Who do you think did this right now? If you just had to pick a name, who do you think did this? Like some weird be, rust. It, have to be a single person. it could be a group. It could be a group. But who do you think? I've did literally this? been here one day. <laughs> I don't think I know ninety-nine percent of the people in this town. We've met three people. On the ship? One of them is dead. One on the ship. I think it on the ship that just left. It could have been no. you. Could have been you, Crane. There was like a little period where we didn't see you, and then so that could have been you. If you and want, accuse me of the of the murder. That sounds like a terrible I can, idea. I can I can I can pretend to rough things up. I can pretend to rough things up. I can storm around town. Let's see if that generates a reaction from anyone. <laughs> the reaction of people trying to kill you. I'd like to have you ran further than today. And you're incredibly capable, but are you capable enough against like a whole town who suddenly wants you dead? 
Believe me, I've uh, I've fought people a lot scarier than this hillbilly town. Okay, it's kind of mean. Uh, I'm not sold on the idea yet. Uh, Kyle, generally, do like smooshing together in terms of like, could this be a monster? Because it was like kind of slashy. Could like slashy plus rusty <laughs> plus um, smells like rot in all the stories I've heard and monster stuff I've encountered. Any of that go together at all in my head? Uh, I'll let you do a uh, a history check. Just straight up, but it's a hard DC. Yeah. I figured it would be. Mm, it was almost a 17 on the dice, and then it turned to a 10. No, oh, I'm not going to use portent on this. Um, uh, I am going to say, you do have a decent portent to... I know I do have a decent portent, and my history is really good. But now I'm scared that we might need to save to crane later, I and I might need that. the good portent for something else. <laughs> you know, um, your kid's gonna do. It turns into seventeen. A seventeen's not enough. No. Would it need to be at least twenty? My concern is it's not like a person; that it's like a like a monstrosity. But I mean, you know, there's some intelligence torture could be a person working with monstrosity i wondered yeah i kind of wondered like with the fingers oh no maybe a little monster ate it nibbled them off but this isn't like an animal nettie and i've seen animals when they get to a carcass that was like a blade intentional three fingers speaks to Not something primal, something thinking, calculating. So I'd be in favor of either two paths. I don't want to waste too much time on this boat because my little paws are getting cold. We could either stake out, book another night at the Laughing Mags Inn, and then try and stake this out tonight, or bid this town goodbye, head out on the road. Well, I mean, Ain't it? It's, it seems to be connected to something for you. I don't think it's anyone's decision but yours. Well, I kind of want to see what's going to happen. So I'm personally down for a stakeout, if you guys all are. Where well, she goes, I go. Let's at least see what the rest of the day brings us first. But if it comes to it, if it comes useful, sure. I just ask that whenever we can get out of here, if push comes to shove, we do. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if, if everyone up top's found anything else. Let's go back and tell Rusty. Make way back to Rusty. Uh, and he has begun the process of moving up into Upper Vale and shifting the bodies into... Uh, basically into the warehouse, one of the warehouses up top, uh, until they can be taken to be uh, buried, uh, but they still possibly need them as evidence, so like they're not sure what to do with them yet. So uh, they're in one of the warehouses. Uh, and Rusty is at Mad Jack's drinking. Maybe we should book another room at Mad Jack's. We've got silver from Cal. One room, let's go. Anything, I'm going to be for the remainder of my detect magic just keeping an eye out to see if anything or any one pops with anything magical including even like people around us who look like normal people who maybe have something magic on them mm -hmm. no signs no sparks no magic um you guys make your way back up into uh mad jacks get a room um and find rusty in his cups already uh and he looks to you all um so uh any any kind of signs? Any answers? Huh? Is is this you making badges? I, it's actually underway in my shop. But aren't you making them? Yeah, it's happening right now. You can do it while you're drinking. Yeah. Wouldn't be a good tinker if I couldn't just drink all day. Can we Look see your this shop? guy? Told you, Rusty. Can we see your shop? Do the cool things in there? Yeah, I mean, it's... Don't we have... 
Did you find anything? Like, I, we got a murder going on. Let's walk and yes. talk. We can we can fill you in the details when we go to your shop. I don't walk so well while I'm drunk, but you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> he gets up, toddles a little bit, uh, and he does lead you uh, down out of Mad Jacks and just catching him up on basically that there was mu- much more to, to be found. Um, but he leads you to... Uh, Beside one of these big warehouses is like a small like shack. It's maybe 15 by 15. uh, And he just kind of big open arm gesture. This is the shop. It's not much, but it works. And he kicks open the door uh, and inside just this this, like plume of like smoke and this sense of oil and like uh, just this like churning like uh, like an engine running like it just like sound uh, it's it's awful immediately uh, as he goes inside when you're uh, you you poke your heads inside because there's not a whole lot of room inside and basically the entirety of the room is like a Rube Goldberg machine of gears and pipes and uh, and pistons that are firing up and down. And there's a, a hammer that is like a smelting hammer that is like going and, and smacking into metal. Um, and you can see as it smacks and smacks and smacks at its hits for a certain point, another lever comes down and like kicks the piece of metal that it's been hammering. And it goes and it goes onto like a conveyor belt that rolls down along and then drops into uh, a cooling uh, vat that and that just as it steams out it falls over and then that begins to spill out and you can see that there's like an automated system here happening uh, and indeed there are these little circular badges being made of metal over in, in the uh, little pile he's like ah oh, yeah see there's two already he holds up two uh, they're like <laughs> just very simple badges with like a star they don't say anything, but that's what they are. Like a sheriff sick. Yeah. Um, Two more here coming uh, shortly. De Crane, could this man help you with your your special device thing? What that's what I mean. My device. I don't know how that thing on your hip works, but you were counting the stuff that goes inside it the other day. Could this guy make more of that? <sighs> I could. That's a good point. Do you think you could make? Do you have gunpowder? Do you think you could make? <laughs> oh no, I don't have any gunpowder. That's that's uh, well, that would be highly illegal. <laughs> you know, I can't. I can't be having gunpowder. But also, I would absolutely have blown myself up at this point. I, <laughs> I try and avoid any of the kind of black powder kind of stuff. I uh, I had some TNT one time. Oh boy, that was fun. Uh, but. Uh, you gotta be careful with that kind of stuff. You have black powder on you? You shouldn't be in here, actually. He like immediately like <laughs> you out of the room. I smirk like a, I my serious I get a little smirk like It's the first time we've seen you smile in this entire campaign. He ushers you out into the into the cold outside. Uh and uh yeah, you definitely shouldn't be in here with, with black powder. There's it's just too volatile. L- look. Um, as much as I do love showing off my, my gadgets and gizmos um, and I'm very curious as to what device it is he keeps talking about uh, that you have um, I need to know whether I need to get the company here in the next couple of days got to make a trek down to Great Keep or if I can somehow call a meeting and, and explain this as a uh, Something we don't have to worry about. Let me let me ask you something. If you thought one person did this, who do you think did it? If you just had to name someone, be out of there's suspicion. No, there's no one in town I would suspect capable of murdering three of people. Like people didn't like Duke. He was a dick. People liked Mina a lot. They wouldn't have killed her. She was super nice. She did a cool thing with fire. She was super fun to have around, and Calder could be a—he uh, was a bit of a, a bit of a douche, but he was—he was—he was cordial. He was nice enough. They come, 
they came back around here every six months, like clockwork. They were always here every six months. They would go off on their excursions. They'd make their way around the coast to the Gamma Last, and then they'd come back and they'd peddle some bullshit. And then they would make six months around the other way, and they'd try and find some treasure elsewhere, and then they'd come back here. They were they were a staple. Did you say were they were they last at Gamma Last? Is that where they last came from? Trinkets from there? Uh yeah, they would have been there. Well, they would have been there a couple months ago, but yeah. When they that's what he back. told us. Is that's where they just came from. Mm-hmm. When they came back every six months, did they deal with anyone in particular? No. Mom did they have a, tra- a trading partner at all? He, or I don't even know why they them. came back here. No one ever bought their shit. <laughs> no one. We don't have money here. I think they honestly came back here because it was a safe place. It's a safe space. This was just a, a spot for the weirdos of the world to come and and be safe and apparently that was fine for years and now it's not this is why I'm all concerned so what you're saying maybe is that they stole something that they shouldn't have and this was revenge it's possible it's possible I mean they were uh, I don't want to call them thieves but they were certainly relic hunters grave robbers treasure hunters and some people's treasure is sometimes other people's stuff Gamalast is that spooky volcano-y ashes? No? What's Gamalast? Ex, ex-mage society, right? Like a fallen mage society? Mm-hmm. Gamalast is a fallen mage society? Yeah, it was a flying city that was a, a fallen mage, mageocracy. And they were just fucking around in the ruins of that? Doesn't mm-hmm. sound good. That guy was like really mad that he thought about years ago and then Rick Earl did it. And... Uh, I didn't <laughs> know. Everybody's done it now. <laughs> it's past uh that sounds like maybe they found something they shouldn't have and someone came to get their thing i mean either that or like if they're here every six months if someone was gonna try to track them down why wouldn't you just wait for the place they show up exactly when they show up same place every six months to me it sounds like something was after them but it like meant to be after them and it got them and then they left well that's good I mean, it doesn't Rusty, give us any answers, but Rusty, um, we was think we were thinking, maybe we do one stake out here tonight, make sure everything coast is clear, and then if nothing else spooky scary happens, you could say problem solved, targeted hit, now they're gone. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a real good plan. They got themselves in too deep. They bit off more than they could chew. We know better, right? Yes. Okay. Light tunnel. Here we go. The end is near. I understand. Yeah. Have a night. Let's uh, let's have some dinner, and have mm-hmm. some drinks, mm-hmm. and uh, we can uh, we can see this through in the morning. See it through. All right. Great. What a good day. Well, the, 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 some people die. Three people die, but... Pretty good day. Net positive. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Max. Makes his way back yeah. over to Mad Jax. Um, what do you guys want to do f- through the day? It is still early. Oh, gosh. Um, it doesn't have to be anything. I'm trying to think if there's any other lead. There's really like no other leads with this, is there? Let's go to Mad Jack's for dinner because we already had the one restaurant's food. And so now let's try the other restaurant. Let's compare it better. <laughs> uh, equally, equally bad. Okay. Uh, there's no real boon here. The only benefit to this place is it's it's got a little bit more of a livelier atmosphere. OK. Um, and that can be good and bad as it gets rowdier as people drink more um you see about six or seven fights break out in various stages of um of the night um but never with the intent to be more than like a friend friendly brawl just a little fisticuffs yeah just fisticuffs between friends (laughs) um it's uh ultimately not the not terrible not nobody's nobody's up for blood it kind of reinforces this like vibe of like everyone's here 
yeah, they're rough and tumble, but like they're not looking to actually hurt anyone. Um, they're just looking to let off some steam. Um, but dinner turns to evening and night comes. Do you guys actually want to stake out through the evening? Where do you want to do this? What are you looking to do? I do want to stake out. I was thinking maybe we go down and stake out the docks area. See if something comes back, pops back up. Like maybe they were in a rush. Maybe this thing is going to come back and see if it can find what it was looking for. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like the end of the dock, right? So there's mm -hmm. nowhere else. I mean, in theory, we could be in the boat because otherwise there's nowhere else to kind of hide. Um, I can ritually cast alarm anywhere if we want to see if anything. You could cast that around the boat and then we could try and have more of a vantage point for more of the docks. Kyle, is the, um, that rust kind of stuff? I guess we could look again if we were going to go look again again it was only where there was like blades or scratches it's not like where things would have been like rested or footprints or anything like that uh it seemed more like it was within like yeah the the groove lines <laughs> okay. of, of yeah where it would have caught if it was a blade okay so i mean we don't know if this thing like if these people came from another boat that like basically what direction they boarded this boat from yeah, you guys didn't do like you know any checks around to like look for you know footprints or anything like that but it's it's basically from boat to dock and yeah. there uh, were a dozen people there immediately would have trampled any of that kind mm -hmm. of sign of like tracks and trails mm -hmm. so um, we figured that's why we didn't ask you we didn't want to you know, of course not bore you you know so sorry so what's the plan i say you could do a yeah. army around that shit. We might need to be in the boat though is what is what you're saying. There's nowhere to place inside for an alarm as well. Yes, I need to stay inside. Oh, but that's scary. um there's but there's no other like boats around that we could commandeer and look from because it's at like the end of a dock, right? That's does the that, concern here. Does their boat have a little crow's nest or some like yeah. higher? There's just a specifically like a smaller vessel. Um you could find it in like the Swim in the fucking cold uh in in like there's like an element of like there's some structures next to the dock there's like um uh not warehouses but like it's like fishing shacks like there's there is some some structures nearby that you could use as cover i say we try and hide out one of those or something easy enough um okay so what i want for this is uh a couple of checks we're going to do a group stealth check, a group Andy, did stealth you... check. Good. Ooh. Well, that's my question is, am I doing an alarm? And if so, I got to be inside whatever the alarm is. Two, we have a squirrel and a little light thingy. Can they look from places and potentially just like make noise or something? Well, I guess the squirrel might be able to. The little little light yeah. light bulb can't exactly my light bulb <laughs> pay attention to itself. Yeah. If you go in the boat, we should like all be in the boat. I just don't want you to be alone in the boat. Yeah. The alarm only works for you. Yeah. So let's we just. We don't have right to now. use it. We could do something else, but. We could like try and watch from the boat. Be, being alone on the boat, it might be just what we need, though. We're not leaving Andy alone on the boat. Okay, I'm going to roll this. Ready? Odds, boat, evens, little shack. Even little shack. It's a six or wait a tick. It's a nine. <laughs> we'll flip through. We're in the boat. Um. Damn. All right. Um, you all make it into the boat then. Um, where do you set the alarm? Do you set the alarm in the cargo in the little shop spot um, on the main deck? Remember, you have to um, be inside. Yeah, I have to be inside it. So the main deck wouldn't make sense because I just have to sit in the deck. But anyways, I should check this ball. Can't get off my phone. And then I'd in probably case. be like occasionally poking my head out on the main deck, trying to look around the docks. Oh, no, you don't have to be inside it. OK, you don't have to be inside it. That's um, we're thinking tiny hut. Mm. So well, why don't we alarm just... around the boat? Watch from the shore. 
watch from a shack. Yeah. Okay. Uh, until the spell ends, an alarm or two whenever a tiny or larger creature touches or enters the warded area. You can okay. designate creatures that won't set off the alarm. So we could still ten- send Tootsweet in there, and I could say Tootsweet doesn't count. Yep. Um, I just have to stay within one mile. Great. So, I want to wrap this up. So Let's do it. I want a group stealth check, a group perception it. check, and then a constitution <laughs> saving throw from everyone. Great. Group stealth. Ooh. Not do great. We, are we doing this raw or are we doing this with help? I didn't cast it because it only lasts an hour. Yeah. This is My stealth is not very good. I just rolled bad. Uh, stealth first, then persuasion. Or sorry, persuasion. Perception. Stealth, perception, con save in that order. Oh, okay. man, I rolled the same fucking thing again. Stealth is... So I rolled a nine. <gasps> okay, one fail. Plus five, 14. Oh. Yeah, oh. one success. Okay, 13. Success. Oh, that's not great. Um, so my stealth was, sorry, seven. Uh, fail. Mm. And Eden's uh, stealth? 14. Success, okay. Net uh, net success. Oof. Perception. I rolled low. Okay. I only got an 11. Okay. I also got an 11. Okay. I rolled a five plus five, ten. Guys, okay. the best I can't have the best perception <laughs> check in the group. My perception's so bad. I got an 18. Great. Okay, I rolled well. But. Um, and then a constitution saving throw across the board. I got 12. I got 20. So 20. Great, great. Oh, great. I rolled a one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, this one's actually interesting as to why I'm going to explain your one. Oh. But we'll come to that in a second. Um, the evening passes incredibly uneventfully. Hmm. Nothing comes to the ship. The alarm is never once triggered. Nobody even walks near the boat. Um, You're confident that there's nothing has made its way. You guys pushed yourselves to the limits to like stay up through the evening to watch and make sure you never got a whiff of the rot. Hmm. You never saw a shift in shadow. And as morning breaks, the Kingsmith is as it was. However, uh, Cram, through the evening, though you don't necessarily need sleep, um, and you've not been partaking a ton of food and drink, um, there's been a natural um, energy draw that has sustained you significantly. Um, You've not even had to consider it. This whole journey, this week and change, but this evening, you, it's like you've been starving for a week. Like you, you've been gorging yourself so much and then suddenly nothing. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's like having gone a week without food. All of a sudden you are aching hungry after, uh, out of nowhere. Um, and you will start your next morning with a point of exhaustion. Okay. Oof. And rapidly come to realize that um, your former company was sating you quite well. That your current company perhaps is not uh, quite as uh, fulfilling. I am with children, I guess. (laughs) Well, you were with a super magic ball child. Would that have made any difference? (laughs) The energy was pretty potent. That is suddenly no longer there. Where's exhaustion again? Sorry. Uh, It's in the conditions. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so unfortunately, nothing comes of the evening's watch. Just to speed things along and come to a, a, a conclusion, uh, Rusty is more than happy with this outcome. Uh, <laughs> thrilled at the ability to say they made a dumb choice, got themselves killed by getting in too deep with the wrong people. And immediately everyone's like, oh, well, yeah, of course, those fucking idiots. They, why would they do that? 
Um, everyone buys it and goes along pretty much immediately. Uh, and Rusty just, whoo, that was a close one. Uh, and moves on with his, uh, with his life. And Dark Veil continues. Um, without the... Uh, without the Kingsmith, uh, unfortunately, the ship is still there. What will become of it is TBD. Um, but unfortunately, their um, the crew is is slain and gone. Um, as morning breaks and this news is kind of delivered, um, do you guys hang back? Do you have any last minute preparations, or do you hit the road? I say we get out of Dodge. Let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, I have one final question for you before we end for this evening, uh, and it will be determined. Uh, it'll determine the way in which you go home, the path with which you go home. Um, the travel back to Carden from Darkvale is about uh, anywhere from an eleven to a fourteen day journey. Um, there are a variety of factors which will apply how fast or slow that pace is, uh, weather, road conditions, overland travel versus road, different encounters potentially. Um, and realistically, you have three paths you could take, but really you only have two. You could go back the way you came along the river to grill and then south. That seems highly unlikely you'll choose it, but so I'm not going to entertain it. Um, the other two are to take the Ash Road and go directly south from Darkvale towards the Grey Keep. And then uh, basically from Grey Keep uh, would travel uh, along the west edge of Kinshire and then head east towards the uh, towards Carden by the High Road. Um, it's more of like a direct like kind of L, straight south and then due east when it's time to, to go east. Um, your alternate route is to go overland. It's a more direct line, but it takes you overland, which means that there's you're not traveling by roads, um, means that you're steering clear of potential patrols and any attention that would go by the roads, um, but you have a greater risk in the wilderness of various uh, issues, and it's, it's just slower travel. There's not roads. Um, so in theory, the overland route takes potentially slightly longer, is potentially slightly more dangerous, but does come with its own rewards um, and its own um, protections from uh, being seen on the road. Uh, or you take the Ash Road. It's the faster route, faster travel on main roads, um, less wilderness encounter, um, still chance for encounter uh, as... Uh, there's still chances for counters on the road, um, but less uh, like reward potential. I like the woods as a druidy guy, but the fast way home sounds good too. I am also used to not traveling by the most traveled road. That's like, that's my instinct. So why don't we take the woods? To crane, you love the woods. <laughs> I'm down for the woods. Yeah, you got a ranger, you got a druid, you got a shepherd. There's a lot to learn in the woods. Let's go. And a guy who loves learning. <laughs> the overland route it is, is the direct straight line traveling south, southeast towards Carden, uh, about 12 to 15 days on the road. And we will play out how that uh, how that goes next time. Love it. Ooh, what a spooky mystery. That was so spooky.